Hello everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome to the finishing tutorial for the Flying Lesson Cell 2023. This is finished on the Chantal's 141 design unfinished hanging signboard that she designed specifically for uh, the finishing of the Silver Creek Sampler's Flying Lesson. So I want to talk a little bit about finishing. Some of the steps for finishing I was not able to film because the sign is large. So I know you're seeing this right here sprayed. I'm going to backtrack and show you putting it together in a minute. But I fin first sprayed just the, the pole for hanging the sign with this stone texture spray paint from Krylon. It is what gives it texture. Now, the sign part is finished the way I finished that haunted house, and I've been asked a lot of times how I did that. Here's a look at all the products I used today. Um, so there's gonna be some black spray paint, the stone texture, some stain, some paint, and then a, a polyurethane finish. So I did that, I let that sit. I did do both sides after I assembled the sign and then once I assembled it, I spray painted it black, and then I used a very coarse sandpaper. The sanding tool I'm using is linked in the description below, uh, as are anything that I could find the links for, and that reveals that coarse texture and really grunges it up. That is what I am looking for. So here is the assembly. With the hanging sign, you get the hanging sign, you get two base pieces, two side pieces, oops, and one sign. Ignore this, I have two here because I have another sign. So I have one sign, you can kind of see it off to the side already put together. I like to see what side of the pieces I want to use the most. Now, why are there two bottom pieces and two side pieces? These are to stabilize your sign. We are hanging something from a thin piece of wood. You don't want it to topple over. So um, yes, I am using my fingers. You guys, I tried really hard. My tight bond glue, which Chantal highly recommends, um, and I also very much recommend it. You can get it at Lowe's. I've also linked to it in Amazon. Um, you want to glue those two base pieces together. Then that little lip along the bottom edge there um, yes, I'm just going to be classy and use my finger. You want to put, I put some glue on here too because that is going to slide down in between those two pieces. Tight bond, it does dry quickly. Because it dries quickly, you guys, um, you want to kind of make sure everything isn't you know, shifted, that shifted a little bit. So I'm going to slide that down. Now, if glue comes out, I recommend, kind of like you would um, if you were caulking something, you want to take your finger and you want to smooth that out. Now, don't worry, if you don't, if glue, you know, squishes out wherever, um, you can sand it off later. See that glue right there on that first one? I'm gonna have to sand all of that off. And it's no big deal, I did do that later on. I'm also, I also have clamps. You do not need these. These are inexpensive. I got that mine at Lowe's or Home Depot, one of them. Uh, and I love them because it does clamp everything together while glue dries. It's also super handy if you're using E6000 or hot glue and you want to clamp something down um, and hold it there until the glue dries. I highly recommend them. It also comes in handy if you want to make your own um, cording. I hold my floss while it's gluing. So these pieces fit on either side of the base, just like so. So see how thick that base is? This is all to secure your base so that your sign doesn't go toppling over. Now that being said, I recommend do not overfill your hanging sign. Um, it is, it, if you put too much or anything super heavy on it, it is going to fall over. Um, I don't really know where that would happen. I mean, how much you would have to do to get that to happen. I have my, my finishing piece and some decor, but I don't have a ton going on on my sign. Most of my decoration I have done around it because I want my stitching to still be, take center stage. Now, I talk about this in card making a lot. My... 
my finishing style, I think no matter what I'm crafting, is I'm telling a story. And my story here is, what what am I imagining with the flying lesson sign? It is a sign. It looks like a sign. It looks like a sign, an old sign. So I wanted my sign post to look like an old sign. Like I really was putting myself in, you know, Diagon Alley, like in Harry Potter or whatever. That's kind of where I was getting my inspiration from. Now, I don't want my sign though to have that same look. I want my sign to be, my sign post, pardon me, to be that black, grungy, textured, and I want my sign to look like an old wood sign. I want the, I want the grain of the wood to show up. So this is Jacobine, I'm probably saying that wrong, forgive me, stain. I have this in my stash at home. You can get this also, um, Lowe's, Home Depot, Hobby Lobby, whatever. Pick the stain you want. Now, I did pick a dark stain. I don't want black stain, but I want it to be dark. I let it sit for five minutes. I did apply it with a foam brush. And then, this is five minutes later, you can see it's starting to absorb. I'm going to come in. I did get some plastic gloves you guys, because I didn't want to have stained up fingers. And I have a lint free, just an old rag. In fact, I started to do it and I was like, oh girl, go get your gloves. Uh, you want to rub off that excess and rub in the direction of the grain. Look at the beauty. Oh my gosh, you guys, of the grain coming through. Now this is gorgeous. This is absolutely beautiful. But the problem is you do not want a beautiful sign with your grungy sign po post. At least I don't. I want my sign to be grungy too. So I will be distressing this a little bit. Now, because this is a freestanding design, I did opt to stain both sides. Please know when you get your finishing pieces from Chantal, one side is very smooth. They sand it for you. That is one of the amazing things about ordering from 141 Design. But mostly the front side, that's the decorative side. That's got the beautiful scoring line, lasered lines in it and all of that. We are not as concerned with the back side. If you want to finish it, that's great, but please keep in mind, it's, it's probably going to be a little rougher. Mine's a little rougher, but it's freestanding, so I don't want it to be that, that, you know, natural color of wood if you're just looking at it from a distance. So I did finish the front and back of all of my pieces. So there is my sign. I want to let that dry a little bit. Now this is beautiful, but I am thinking, old, grungy, how can I distress this up even more, right? That is the goal here. The goal is I want my black sign post, I want this dark wood stained sign that is perfectly gonna complement my flying lesson stitch and I want this to dry. So when this is dry, and it doesn't take too terrible long, it was warm here when I did this. So, um, you know, I just set mine outside, honestly, in the sun. That It's fine. I am going to now take, it's not the, I can't remember what weight of sandpaper I used. It's not super smooth, but because I want some texture. I am gonna go along the sides and I'm gonna start grunging it, this up. If you have an electric sander, you can use that. I am linking to this sanding tool down in the description. I purposely did not use my electric sander. That is what I have used many, many times in the past. I didn't use it because I know not everyone has access to one or wants to store one. And this is something that you can easily pick up and can do yourself wherever you might be. So I am distressing the edges and I'm gonna go through and I am really going to distress and grunge up the edges of my stitched piece. Um, or <laughs> stitched piece, my hanging sign, pardon me. And I want the edges to look old and, you know, weathered, old and worn. Again, think Harry Potter if you're kind of like me. Okay, I did not use this paint. I don't know why I picked this one out first. I was like, mm, no. 
uh, too white. So I have grunged it up. I've taken my sander or my sanding in to the sides a little bit. Oh, you guys, I didn't film it. Crud. Okay, see those dark areas of paint? I dry brushed in some dark colors. It's a brown black paint. See those dark areas in there? I did not fully cover the, the stain at all. It's just a few dry brushed areas. I actually took my paintbrush and wiped off most of the paint after I dipped it into that Tommy Art paint. And then I did a few dark areas along the sides where you may see it a little bit. Now, the worst part about paint is paint is going to settle into those laser lines. So I'm using a sharp tool to get rid of that. I didn't realize that didn't film. I'm so sorry. It's not a big deal. You don't have to do that at all. I just wanted some dark grungy little areas. Okay. I honestly took that outside and I polyurethaned it. So that's outside out of the way. Let's finish our stitch. So our stitch, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is five, you know what, we're going to cut down our stick, our uh, press on board. So I have ironed my stitch on my wool pressing mat. And I am going to trim this to five and a quarter by eight inches. This is the stick on board. Five and a quarter by eight inches is what I measured out my stitch. That's what I think is going to look good on the hanging sign. Now, my stitch, I want to make sure it's really nice and flat. I know it's not recommended to spray your, and I'm, I'm ironing the back of it, by the way, to spray anything stitched with overdyed floss. Do that at your own risk. I've already done it multiple times whenever I was photographing this as I was stitching, so I wasn't too worried about it. I am double checking. I can see through my my linen. That's going to work. Again, five and a quarter by eight inches if you stitched on 32 count or 16 count. I have some leftover batting. I've talked about this many times. I personally prefer two layers of batting, but I use thin batting. This is leftover from quilting projects. If you have a thicker, this is 100% wool batting. If you have a polyester or a cotton blend and it's got more loft to it, you may only want one layer of batting or maybe you don't want any batting at all. I like my stitch to have just a slight puffy texture to it. So I often will opt to use the batting for my stitch. Now I am simply trimming my batting to the size of my press on board. And then we are going to wrap this around. As far as attaching your stitch to the press on board, I'm going to remove the backing paper. Only one side has the backing paper. It's super sticky. And I'm going to place one of the pieces of batting. The other one's just sitting on top of it. So one is attached, one is sitting on top. Then we're going to wrap our stitch around. And what I like to do is take the Clover Wonder Clips and I like to clip the stitch in place. We're going to stitch it or clip it in place. We can make adjustments uh, like side to side if we need to or top to bottom to make sure it's as even as possible. I'm going to trim down. I probably could have trimmed down more than this, truth be told, but I didn't. Um, a little bit of the excess fabric along three of the sides of my stitch so that I don't have as much to wrap around. Um, and again, I, I really probably should have trimmed it down a little bit more, but that's okay. And then I'm going to clip it in place and we're going to work to adjust. You can see I'm using my fingers and adjusting. Now I am going to use the finishing tape from Fat Quarter Shop to attach my stitch to my board. If you prefer to lace, this would be the time where you would want to do the lacing. I was going for super speedy here. I mean, this is a Halloween decoration, not an heirloom piece. I, I know it doesn't always matter. I have shown lacing in the past. Please do whatever you want to do. No judgment zone here. My only prerequisite or my only suggestion, I suppose I should say, 
get your text straight. If your text is going wonky, you're not going to love your finished piece. So I am smoothing out the, the text. I'm making sure, you know, all of the words and things are going the correct direction or not direction, that they're not going skewed and wonky. I'm eyeballing the sides. Does that look even? Does the top and the bottom look even from the stitch line to the edge of the linen? Does that look good on my board? Remember, my actual board is outside, polyurethane. Please do that in a well-ventilated area, drying. Um, so yes, that looks good. Do I want to mount this on another piece of fabric? You know what, I really don't. Uh, I, want to, I still wanna see my score lines and I have a different idea for how I wanna finish mine. So here we are, my board is finished. Isn't it beautiful? I will tell you that I took a very, very fine grit sandpaper and lightly sanded my piece and then uh, wiped it clean with a damp cloth when I was finished, but I am super, super happy with my finishing board. I think it looks amazing. Let's go ahead and attach our stitch to the press on board, starting with the corners. I like to use the, the sticky circles and I wanna fold my corners in. If you've watched any of my finishing tutorials in the past, you will know that this is generally how I like to do my finishing for all those holiday type of stitches. So we're just folding in. We're gonna do all four corners and then we're going to do the two long sides and then the two short sides. I am just using something sharp I have long nails right now and it's really hard to peel off the backing paper. Or sometimes I just don't wanna to touch the backing paper, I want it to stay sticky. If you have a piercing tool of some sort or something, even the tip of some scissors to help peel the backing off, it kind of is helpful. Okay, then we're going to take our tape. All of these products are listed down in the description below the video here on YouTube. And I am going to trim this along the side or down, down each side. And we're gonna peel this off. And then we're I like to just work one side at a time and concentrate on your corners. You want your corners to be nice and sharp. So I kind of fold in from there and then I smooth it in. Does that look good? Let's look at it from the front. We may have to make adjustments. The beauty of the sticky tape, you can pull your fabric up and adjust as needed. We're going to do the second long side. I like to do the two sides opposite each other and then we'll do the other two sides. Again, fold in that corner, smooth in. Make it nice and taut. And I have some stray threads. We'll get rid of those. And it is a little, you can see the little puffiness to it. That's that batting. I personally, that's the look I like. If you don't, attach it right to the board. If you would like to mount it on fabric, the next step after this is to mount it on a fabric board. Um, like I said, I chose not to do that. I'm actually going to make my own cording. And I highly recommend you follow, um, Vonna Pfeiffer's tutorial or my friend Carrie whose Tiger Lily Designs also has a cording finishing tutorial uh, or how to make cording and I'm going to link both of those videos um, here on the screen in the upper right corner um, or it'll be down in the description if you would like to make your own cording because I did not do that on camera. Uh, I have to look it up every time I make it. That is not something um, that is a tutorial that I do. I'm just simply showing you how I finish things and I would go to them for uh, the details of that. Oh my gosh, you guys, look how good this looks. Like I was so happy with my finish here. Oh, it's gonna look amazing on my board. I'm so excited. Okay, so really happy with this. At this point, it is time for the finishing details. And here's my cording. I used purple and black because I did change anything that was green in the chart to purple. And I made black and purple cording. It's fairly thin. I wanted it to be pretty thin. And I am going to have it meet down at the bottom 
which is not something I do very often because I want to have some hanging tails and I actually want to hang some little charms from it. Now, I like to use the Aileen's glue to attach my cording. So I have folded it in half and found the center and I'm going to start up at the top. I've run a thin bead of glue and I'm going to simply pat that down and then work my way down each side. I'm not going to completely run glue along the bottom edge. I'm going to let these three sides completely dry before I finish off the bottom of my stitch. Rick rack trim, pom pom trim, uh, other kinds of trim. I even considered like the the Tim Holtz black glittery tinsely type trim, Halloween trim. There's all kinds of things you could put around the edges. Um, kind of just let your imagination go wild here, whatever you like. Or you can mount it on another piece of uh, press on board with fabric. And then I'm going to let this sit and completely air dry. Uh, it doesn't take that long. In between all of this, I know I showed you all of the painting of the post and um, everything. There was a lot of back and forth. So I would go, I did, in, in full disclosure, I did this whole finishing in one day. Uh, it did take multiple hours because I would let each step dry for about 30 minutes as far as painting. So the texture spray, each side, that was 30 minutes each, 30 minutes each side. The black spray paint, that was 30 minutes each side for the signpost. Um, I stained my board and then polyurethane, that was 30 minutes each side plus extra time for drying. So lots and lots of time. This is going to be very hard to show you on camera. Um, I'm going to show you what I can. The rest you're going to have to probably use your imagination <laughs> for how it put, went together. It is huge and I just did not have the best way to show how to put this together. Now in the kit, ball chain is how you hang your sign. Now if you want to use something else that's totally fine. But I love this ball chain. I think it's fantastic. So I am going to go ahead and attach this because I want to see how it looks. This is the bare bones. This is your hanging sign. Sign post is all grunged up with texture. Beautiful wood grain hanging sign. Slightly grunged up again with a little paint, a little sanding. So both are slightly grungy, but it's two-tone. I didn't do each piece the exact same. And I know I have it tilted at the side because that was the best way to show it to you guys. Hope you can use your imagination. Look how good this looks. I'm so excited. There's that broom from Michaels. I know I showed that in the q and I'm going to lean my broom here. I have some of these grassy pieces. I just pulled out my sack of goodies from Michaels and I'm going to play. I'm going to lay things out. What do I like? Uh, do I want to do this up at the top? I don't really. I don't think that's going to work. I played around with the hat a lot. You're going to see I'm eventually going to thread the hat uh, through that grapevine wreath broom and kind of bend the, the wire in it because I want it to kind of look like it's sitting with the broom. I, both of the broom and the hat to me really complemented the stitch. So I'm looking for ways to incorporate them. The crows. I love these crows. Everything here, the extras, the hat, the crows, the broom, the kind of, I don't know, straw looking stuff, viney stuff. All of this is from Michaels. I did buy it like eight weeks ago. You would just have to go in and see what you can find. Anything is going, I mean, you can find lots of different things. Just use your imagination. So I want some of that down near the bottom base of my sign. I want some hanging from the top of my sign. And I think I'm going to have a crow sit up at top, the top and I'm gonna have one sit down at the bottom. Other than that, things are going to change. Um, a lot of times I love to stick stuff back behind my stitch piece. For this one, that's just not 
the direction I feel like the piece is taking me. Let your finish, let it, it speak to you, I guess, if you will. So I tied my cording in a little knot down there at the bottom. I'm going to leave long tails for now. Um, and see, I moved the hat down there and I was like, that's cute. I like it down near the bottom better. So that's what we're going to do. And from here, it's time to heat up the hot glue gun, get the E6000 out, and we're going to start putting things together. And we're going to start with this grassy base. So let's cut off tags and stuff like that. There is a slight lip along the back. So I glued it once and it didn't stay put. The little lip where that back support piece, I put ran a bead of hot glue along that and then tucked the stem of the vine there. And that's perfect. We're going to glue the broom along the signpost, but we're going to thread our hat, the um, wire in the hat through the broom first so that the hat is kind of lean or tilted, I guess, on the broomstick, if you will. It's a lot of playing around that grass stuff sticks to everything. So every time I touched it, it would pick up. And I thought about cutting off the, the uh, wire, but I didn't. I just threaded it through, bent it in. I love it. And Michael's had those hats um, last year for sure. I noticed I got some last year and then they have them again, had them again this year or still have them. I again, haven't looked. Okay. So we're going to hide the glue in the back. We're going to glue that down. And I do want to hide a little bit more glue um, along the front and you can see it already pulled up. I cannot believe I did that. Um, the hot glue and I were not good friends. So a lot of this is going to get done off camera, but I do want to show you those clamps. If I, can't stress enough. These clamps are like less than $4 each, I think, at Lowe's, Home Depot, wherever. They are fantastic. Grab grab a clamp the next time you're at a, <laughs> a store like that because you can hold stuff in place. Now, I cut the wires off of my crows. I know the wires are great. If you want to thread um, or secure or you know, whatever, your crow into the piece that you're building, that is when they, those are so super handy. I don't need them. I'm going to hot glue mine to my finishing piece. If you are going to reuse your piece, I would not hot glue any of these things down. I wanted to be completely transparent. This piece is only Halloween. Um, I am going to do a finishing tutorial. I decided not to include it in this one. There will be a separate tutorial on finishing the signpost piece in a way that could be used for multiple seasons and occasions. So you could really just stain the whole thing, the, the post and the sign, or paint it in something more neutral and then use magnets and washers to switch out your stitch piece on it seasonally if that's what you want. But I really wanted to keep this just flying lesson and I'm showing you how I finished mine. Please feel free to finish yours however you would like. This is simply inspiration and I am going to show you some other pieces I pulled to use to decorate with this later on, you would not have to really attach these things. You could lean the broom uh, against the pole, or you could even maybe wire it, tie it in place with a little twine or, or, or craft wire if you wanted to, and then remove it later on. You could just tuck grasses and things. You could use the wires on the crows and carefully slide them in place um, on the signpost itself and, you know, secure it that way and then remove them when the season's over. So there are ways to not make it permanent. I made mine permanent. I just really want to be completely upfront about the fact that mine is permanent. And I know it's not, it's so hard to see right now because it's huge. It was really, really hard for me to show the gluing of all of this. I, and I don't know that, that we even need to. Okay. I moved it out of the way and I hot glued stuff. 
I am knotting the ends of my cording. Let's go back to our stitch, which is the focus of the whole thing anyway. I will say I left my ends a little long. I evened up the knots. One knot's a little bit like one strand, pardon me, is longer than the other. I wanted them a little uneven. I think I may shorten them a little bit more. We'll see. Um, but then I'm just going to take something and separate the ends. So I knotted each of the ends and now I'm making tassel ends. Maybe I'll just shorten the tassels. I don't know. But what I ended up doing, I have some Tim Holtz charms. I have like a little silver spider. I have a little number 13. And I think the poison charm, there's also a toxic one. We are going to tie those or secure those with some uh, thread. We're just going to uh, sew them in. I used a toothbrush to fix my tassel ends. <laughs> Brush them out. Um, and then I'm going to run some Aileen's glue and secure the bottom edge of my um, cording to my stitch piece. But we, I want to sew in these charms to the tassels. I think that might be kind of fun and just a little unexpected Halloween extra. I, all about the little extras. I also have this little sign from Tim Holtz. It says curious. I think curious things. Is that the one I picked? Um, and we're going to glue that to the top of our sign. So instead of like bows, I felt like at this point, I have a lot going on my sign. <laughs> I have a lot. I've got my crows. I've got my hat, my broom, the straw, you know, I didn't want a big bow. I didn't want it covering up the sign. So uh, instead, I am going to put some little other details on my sign instead because I still wanted to decorate it. So I've got some thread. I am going to thread the charm on and I'm just going to sew this in to the knot and then secure it. No real uh, super technique here. I'm simply threading the little charm, whatever charm it is, threading it through my knot, and then I'm going to secure it into the knot and that came unthreaded. I had such an issue that day. And then I'm just running it through again and knotting it. I basically want my charms to look like they're hanging in the tassels. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So little spider and then the number 13 and the poison charms are going to be in the other tassel. It's just a little decorative thing. It's teeny tiny, unexpected, kind of fun. I am going to do that for my other two charms. Really quick, we'll thread on the charm and put it into the knot. Okay. Now, once I have everything, I guess I'm still working on that. So uh, once I have everything into or tied into the tassels on my stitched piece, I want to secure my stitch to the board. I am just going to hot glue it. If you want to attach it a different way, you can totally do that. Whatever you like to do is totally fine. And then at the top of the sign, this is where I want to put my little um, signage. And I do have some of the little hardware that look like little rivets that I'm going to glue in place. Now these are metal pieces and I think the E6000 is the best glue for it if you don't want it going anywhere. Hot glue is not my favorite for this kind of thing. E6000 is the way to go. Kind of stinks having to have multiple glues, but really it's multiple tools for multiple, you know, multiple um, mediums. So I glued that at the top and I'm not in the frame. So again, I apologize. A little bit of glue at the two little, um, Uh, little circles, little openings at the side. And then I'm just going to put these little rivets in place. It's just detail, you guys. All of this is detail and what I think makes a stitch come to life. 
So I've glued those down in place. You're gonna wanna let this sit and completely dry. If you followed the sleigh rides out where I did the rivets, you need to make sure that it sits completely flat because other it does take a little bit for that E6000 to dry. Um, I'm gonna put my hot glue on the back. I ran out of my hot glue stick, I and then I couldn't find my other hot glue stick. Uh, and I need to put another uh, hot glue stick in here, and then we're just going to press this onto the board. At this point, we're almost finished. Um, this is really it. Now you can embellish. You can add, like I'm going to add a cauldron that has a pumpkin and some more uh, sprigs and things in it, and more like that straw or grass or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you want to secure your crows. I have one sitting up on the signpost that you're going to see in the finish or in the finishing photos that again I'll show here at the end and I showed at the beginning. Um, but anything you can add to it. I love it. I absolutely love how it turned out. Have fun with your signs. I cannot wait to see everybody's finished signs. Please post them in the Facebook group or on Instagram and tag me. Uh, I, again, I cannot wait to see everything that you guys do with this amazing piece. And thank you to Chantal for designing such an amazing finishing piece that not only works fantastic for Halloween, but I can see this going forward for fall pieces, Christmas pieces, winter pieces, all of the things. And here is an accurate depiction of me with the hot glue. The hot glue and I were not best friends. I did have to pick it all out and then I was able to secure it, but I wanted to tack it down and here I'm just gonna glue that crow to sit right here. That'll help tack it down too, but that'll work great. And just have fun with it. My goal and my hope for you guys in any of these stitching sals that we do or stitch alongs that we do and finishing tutorials is to have fun with it. Don't be afraid to finish. We can all finish. We um, all have the ability to make something beautiful that we can look at and enjoy in our home. So I am gonna let this sit and let my E6000 completely dry. I'm going to, I've got clamps, you can see <laughs> the broom is clamped to the, the pole. Uh, you maybe can't see, again, it's really hard to tell. Uh, but I was able to finally get this hot glued in place. And now it's time to decorate for Halloween. So here is a look again at the finished piece. So you can see a close up of how it looks on the board with the little curious things signage, the beautiful flying lesson stitched piece with the cording, little charms, the distressing on the pole, the straw, the broom, the hat, the crow, all of the good things, plus I use that cauldron and some extra little goodies and a crow to kind of style it. The supplies I use are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.